Welcome to this video where we look at the uh, floodplain around Swamp Creek in Kenmore, Washington. And Kenmore is just north of Seattle. And this is actually the second video um, of, of two. And in the first video, I go through uh, some of the, the information about where you find some of this, this data and what some of these terms mean. And I also give some background data on the events. Uh, where we took some of these photos. Uh, but the, the photos that we took were from December of 2020 and January of 2021. And um, what we do is we, we look at the floodplain map and then show you where we are on the map and then show you the photo. Now, the events that we took the photos of are not 100-year um, or 500-year events. They actually are events that occur quite often. Um, so we just want to make sure that, that you understand that you're not looking at, at a 100-year event. But the pictures and, and videos that we have do actually uh, correlate to the floodplain uh, quite nicely. So um, hopefully you'll find this interesting. Again, if you need more about the terminology, then you probably want to look at the first video that's been made about that. Um, my daughter Jojo did help me take the uh, pictures and videos. and. She's actually here to help me do the video. So one of the first questions that she's going to help me with, well, maybe I should um, show the, the overall area that we're looking at. So by the way, this is Kenmore, Washington. And the area that we're looking at is between 73rd Avenue and 80th Avenue and south of 195th. And uh, this is Swamp Creek, and it goes into the Sammamish River, which then flows into Lake Washington. And I went through some of these terms, some of these different zones that you'll see on a floodplain map uh, in the first video. But as a very quick review, Jojo is going to help me to explain these. So Jojo, what is the striped area that you see on here? It's called the floodway. And, and how would you define that? Where the channel normally flows. Yeah, that's actually a, a good way to think of it. It's where the, the channel normally is, or it's the area where you have the main flow. And what about the blue area that we see here? Where it floods first. Yeah, so that's going to be the area when it gets out of the channel. That's going to be the area that it floods first. And then you can see that you have some orange here. So what is the orange? It's the area that floods when the river gets even higher. Yeah, that's exactly right. So when it gets even higher, and we can go and look at that, you know, here in, um, this is just below Swamp Creek Park. Um, you can see that it changes over from this blue to this orange. So it means it's probably getting over a ridge and then it's flowing down to, uh, to this area uh, before it joins back into Swamp Creek. So it was a pretty good definition. So thanks for that, Jojo. So let's take a look at um, some of the areas where we took photographs. And the first area that I wanted to show is this area right here. So we're actually standing up here and we take a photo looking uh, this way. So we're looking east. And this is what we see. So this is a uh, playground at, at an elementary school and that this is a, a low spot here. Now I, I think that the water that got in here is probably just local drainage. I don't think that, the, by the way, Swamp Creek would be out here. I don't think Swamp Creek got high enough to flood this area. Um, but I think that the map is actually capturing this low area pretty well because you can see um, on the map right here that there's just this little area here and that's what we're looking at. So Jojo, I have a question. Um, when you took this picture, why did you not get wet? Or why do you think that this area here is, is dry? Because you would take a picture from here. Because I was on higher ground. Yeah, you were on higher ground. And you can look at the map here and you can see that, you know, this map is not in any of the flood zones. So it's not in what's called the 100-year flood zone or the 500-year flood zone. So we would make an assumption that this is probably higher ground. But of course, you want to go out there and test that assumption. So. That's what we did, and you're right, but you're not getting wet because you are on higher ground. So now what we want to do is we want to move down 73rd. Actually, um, 
I was going to show Swamp Creek. I was going to show a video, and this is where Swamp Creek actually goes under 73rd. So we'll go back to the uh, photos and videos that we had. We'll advance this. And now this was taken at night. But you can see that this is where this uh, travels under 73rd. And I think the video goes to where um, Swamp Creek is then making a turn to the south. So we'll show that on the map. So this is what we're looking at. So we're looking um, at it going underneath 73rd and then making this turn. Now as we move down 73rd, now um, again since we weren't really looking at this uh, 100 year event because it is showing that both sides of 73rd would get flooded during the 100 year event and it even looks like that 73rd may overtop during that event but there was no overtopping of 73rd and this side um, for, for much of this area, there was no flooding over here, so obviously we weren't looking at a 100-year event. But now I wanted to move down here, and I wanted to look at this area here, and you can see it almost looks like it is a tributary that comes through here and passes underneath 73rd, so I want to go look at that in a little bit more detail, or look at the photos of that area. And so this is the photo, this is where we're looking on the west side of 73rd, and um, Jojo, what do you see at the bottom of this photo here? A duck. Yeah, so you see some ducks down there. You know, and unfortunately this is actually in, and for privacy, you know, we try to keep addresses and um, try to keep details of people's houses out of the video, but, uh, but this actually is in somebody's side yard, and you can see that there is quite a bit of water that's in this, in this side yard. So we can move to the other side so now we're looking at and I'll show you over here so before we we're looking over here now we're on the other side so we're on the eastern side of 73rd now and you can see that it, it does look like that this is a tributary and Georgia what do you see from here I know it's kind of hard to see because it's a picture but what do you see going on here um, more flow moving through the flood yeah, so you're seeing this water that's flowing through the floodplain, and it's flowing from north to south, and it's, it looks like that it's getting into this little small tributary and then moving towards Swamp Creek in these photos. So now I wanted to move a little bit further. So we're, we're looking about right here, and then I wanted to show some photos that are taking uh, that are taken a little bit further upstream. So this is, again, you can see that the floodplain here is activated, so, um, you know, and this is what, what we would expect. And, and obviously if this was a 100-year event, we would see the floodplain activated on both sides of 73rd, and there would most likely be more water um, in this floodplain here. And I think I have a, this is a little bit further up, so we're moving a little bit further north. So this looks like a, uh, um, like a storage area. And this area is somewhere about right here on the floodplain map. And Jojo, again, what do you see in this picture? More ducks. Yeah, I see more ducks. So the ducks were liking this event. Um, of course, the people that lived there did, definitely did not like that as much as the ducks did. Um, so now I wanted to, um, again, show you on the map as we move a little bit further up. So we're starting to get up to this area. So pretty close to the same area that we're just looking at. But you can see that there are some houses. These little shapes here are showing that there's actually houses that are in the floodplain. And um, We'll show a, a photo, and again, you know, I try not to, you know, get addresses and stuff in the photos, but you can see that this is somebody's fence, it's their front yard, you know, and the, the water is actually uh, moving from Swamp Creek and actually getting into that area and getting near the fence. So now I wanted to um, move out of this area for right now, and I actually wanted to... Um, 
move up to this area. So I wanted to move closer to 80th and I wanted to actually go in and I wanted to look at this ditch. So let's take a look here. And so there's actually a video. And Jojo, this is where we took the, um, uh, the flow measurement. So I have another video where my daughter helped me to take flow measurements on this ditch. And, um, and then we can actually move upstream. Oh, by the way, that was the bridge. Sorry, it didn't make that. So this is a little bit further upstream. And you can see it goes underneath the culvert. And I think if they got enough flow, we'd probably overtop 195th. But you can see here we're not overtopping 195th. And this is the area where we um, took the flow measurements. And... Uh, so Jojo, I wanted to ask if, if you look at the, I mean, you can look at this video and you can see that it's still in the channel and you can look at the, um, the map and you can see that the map is showing that it would still remain in the channel. Um, and why do you think that that is? Because there's not as much area supplying flow at the location. Yeah, so at, um, if you look at the locations we were looking at earlier, there's about 20 square miles, or maybe even a little bit more than 20 square miles that contributes flow to that location. Um, but in uh, at this location, that's less than one square mile. So it is channelized, and you just don't have a lot of, uh, lot of area that contributes flow at that location. And uh, um, I have another photo, and I wanted to show just where this turns. So you can see that this turns, and it turns to the west, and then it starts to join with... The, the main area of uh, Swamp Creek, but it does contribute flow to Swamp Creek. So I was going to show just a photo of that, uh, that turn right there. I think that's the next photo that I have. So let me advance forward. Yeah, so this is the turn. So it's making this turn and the flow is heading to the west towards Swamp Creek. And you can also see that there's this culvert that uh, moves flow from the, uh, the east side of 80th over to the west side of 80th. So if we go back to the map, we can see that it's uh, it's moving flow from this side of 80th over to this side. So uh, Jojo, the um, um, the ditch we had measured the flow in this ditch, um, and when we measured it, it was about two cubic feet per second, but it wasn't flooding during that time. So since it's flooding during this time, is there more or less flow in the ditch? More flow in the ditch. Yeah, so there was more flow in the ditch. So that, that's a little bit about the uh, uh, the floodplain maps. And I also wanted to um, show, you, you caught something that was real interesting. You made a video of something that was real interesting. I wanted to discuss that. So I, I do want to point out this is not Swamp Creek, but this helps to um, explain um, the modeling that we do. Um, as the event, so the, the shaded shells, uh, cells are showing the, um, uh, the, the water elevation. And as the event becomes more severe, so we'll move to a higher event, then we start seeing this flow moving through the floodplain. A lot of times we'll model this and we understand, you know, what's happening. But what's really interesting is that you actually caught a video that helps to show this water that moves through the floodplain. And I wanted to show that video. So let's take a look at that. So this is the video that you are taking. And this is the storage area that um, it's flowing out of. And this is this, this ridge. And the water's actually flowing over the ridge. It's actually making this nice cut through this ridge. And, and it's actually make, giving some sinuosity to it. And um, I forgot to show on the, the map exactly where that is. But that would be... Let me get my... Uh, find that spot again there we go so it's actually right yep so right about here is where that would be 
Okay. Now, I actually went, um, I think that maybe you helped with this video, but we got this and it was actually in the channel. But we went back out there and we took another video. Sorry, that's the same video. Um, so we went back out there and we took another video. And now this is the main channel here that you had just videoed. But you can see now that the, obviously the flow has risen. You can see all this water moving through uh, the floodplain but you can see that it's actually risen. It's over top this ridge. And really what you caught here is like, this looks like a floodway or like a little mini floodway. And then this is like the floodplain outside this little mini floodway. But you can see that, you know, it's finding this path through the floodplain. So, you know, it's actually an interesting video that, that you took here, Joe. So if we look at, um, so I'm going to move to the next slide. And so we went back out there to show when this was dry. And uh, this was after the event was over and it dried up. And obviously you can see this nice channel that, um, that that flood cut through here. And you can see that there's some coarser cobble material in here. Um, <clears throat> and so I took another photo down at the bottom. And just to kind of show you the the power of, of water it looks like that it actually moved some of this material now it could have been there before um, but I suspect that it had moved some of this material and just deposited it um, kind of at the base of that slope so again this is uh, you know interesting pictures that, that were taken at least interesting for me uh, one other thing that we had noticed was uh, that the water that there's a drain that's right here and again this is in the same area that we were showing before but there's a drain and normally what happens is that water will flow from this area and go into this drain and then flow out into the the storage area or the the floodplain of swamp creek but the water had gotten so high that it's actually coming up through this drain and then flowing down here before going back into swamp creek and so uh, i believe it was the city of kenmore came out and put the sandbags down and basically develop this path to get it to flow back into the the floodplain and this is just a shot of the um, the drain where it's coming out of so it's coming out of here and then moving down this way so hopefully you enjoyed this video learned something about floodplains and maybe you found the pictures interesting um, if you're interested in knowing when more of these videos come out feel free to subscribe to the channel um, I appreciate you watching this and we'll end it by showing another picture or uh, another video of the water flowing under 73rd um, again heading downstream this one's in the daylight and it looks like that the water was higher than that first video that I showed. So thanks for watching.